the last thing the devil wants you to do is hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will do anything to keep your mind, your eyes, your ears off the message of the gospel. Hell is a real place. Men may laugh and they may make jokes about the existence of such a place as hell. Natural instinct is either to ignore it, to not think about it whatsoever, or to deny it. Men really don't want to hear about hell, and they want to make it the brunt of jokes. They want to make the devil to be a little horned figure with a pitchfork because they don't want to hear that their sin one day is going to be punished in such a way that I want to tell you defies description. It defies description. And so they make statements to the effect once the jokes are over and past and beyond, it's something like, well, you know, God is such a God of love and mercy that He wouldn't punish somebody in hell for that. God is saying, in essence, I don't bend my law. I will not tolerate sin to go unpunished. I will not wink my eye. I will not pass over transgression. Sin must be punished. God is love. Blessed be His name for that truth. But God is holy. And this God loves holy. This God loves purity. The only two emotions proper to God are love and wrath. Love and wrath. You young people who know not the Lord, you listen to me. There will be no tears from your mom and dad on that day. Plenty of tears in this life. They have pled with you, they have prayed for you to come, to come to Jesus Christ, to turn from your life of sin, to put your trust in Him. And you have laughed and spurned all their pleas. But on that day, on that day, when, they, when the Lord says, bind in hand and foot, your mom and dad who have been redeemed are going to say, Amen. God's will be done. Everything changes that. How you look at things completely change that day. Turn and live. Repent and believe. Come to Christ. And if you go the rest of your days, however long that is, disobeying that gospel command to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to find out the reason for hell. There is a price to pay, and God says you're going to pay it. Now you tell me, preacher, you're just trying to scare me. You're dead right. You're dead right. You ought to be scared to death of hell. Your companions of hell will be sodomites and lesbians and murderers and churchgoers and Sunday school teachers. And preachers, these shall go away. The company that makes up hell, the damned, the wicked, it's moreover a place of unfailing memory. Your memory will be alive and well. If you are found that day, and I am there at the right hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to see you bound hand and foot. You're going to remember me. And down in the pit of hell, you're going to remember every time your minister said, Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. You're going to remember. You're going to remember your mom and your dad pleading with you, and yes, perhaps arguing with you. Because they didn't want to see you go down to hell. You're going to remember all the opportunities you had.
that, that the Christianity is just going to mess my life up. And all my friends and my, what will they say about me? Who cares? Who cares what they'll say? Hell is real. Maybe this will be the last time you'll hear my voice. Maybe this will be the last time you'll hear some preacher say, Now's the time. One more time I ask you, will you come? I plead with you. Will you come tonight? And the Lord pleads with you. is short we're not guaranteed tomorrow God is calling your heart home he's calling you home right now the Bible says that no one comes to the Father except the Spirit of God pulls you near the Holy Spirit is among us the precious Spirit of God is in this room
friends, there is no better time to make your decision for Jesus than right now. None of us know how long we might have to live on this earth. Our lives can end instantly. Jesus has shown great interest in your well-being, and His love for you moved Him to provide a way to escape from the coming destruction. He just asks you to accept Him, to repent of your sins. Through Christ, you can find pardon and receive a new heart to become like Him in character. The sobering news is that Satan is moving in every possible way to keep you from accepting God's gift of salvation. Through the busyness of life, the love of money, or some other fascinating distraction, he works to keep you occupied with anything but what really matters most, your eternal salvation. For you see, the reality of the situation is that if you don't choose Jesus, you will have, by default, chosen Satan. Although Adam and Eve's terrible choice brought untold death and misery, you now have a chance to make a better decision. God is offering you a peace that satisfies the deepest longing in your soul and a joy that will lift you above the trials of this world. The yearning desire of God's heart is for you to be saved and to be with Him in paradise. But the only one who can keep you out of heaven is you. Imagine how tragic it would be if you were needlessly to reject this precious gift. You can choose today to accept the salvation that God has promised. In fact, this very moment, you can accept everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Can I invite you to join me right now in a simple prayer accepting His wonderful offer? Please repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now and humbly ask for your forgiveness. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and I've broken your holy law. I realize that the penalty for sin is death. I believe that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for all of my sins. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and I accept him as my personal savior. From this moment forward, I give you my heart and trust you to be the Lord of my life. Please forgive all of my sins and send your spirit to help me do your will. I thank you for your great love and accept your gift of eternal life. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.